Okay, today we're going to be looking at independent events and the multiplication law. <coughs> so, two events are independent if either occur without being affected by the occurrence of the other. So an example of this would be um, this is, like think about rolling a dice. Say we wanted to roll a dice, so we wanted the probability of landing on a three. Then rolling the dice a second time, probability of landing on a four. Those those two rollings of the dice don't affect the outcome of the other one. Another example which we will look at in a minute is if we say had a bag of different coloured balls of two different colours, and you were to pull one out and then put that ball back in and then pull a different ball out. Every time you pull a ball out. The, the probability of it being a certain colour isn't affected by what you've done previously as long as you put the ball back in. So we have the, the for independent events, we have the multiplication law. And this is for independent So say we have the probability of A and B and we write that as the probability of A and B equals the probability of A multiplied by the probability oops <coughs> by the probability of B. And we can extend this for any number of events. So the probability of A and B and C and so on is the probability of A excuse me, and B and C and so on is we just keep multiplying the probabilities together. so on and so forth. So, um, let's consider a bag with two blue balls and we'll denote that as capital B and five white balls. And here's our bag, and we have our two blue balls, and we have, let's get some, colour them in, and our white balls, one, two, three, four, five. Okay. So, for the first selection, so we select, I've changed the colour to brown, we select one ball at random and we replace it. Then select another ball. So there's always going to be seven balls in the bag. So for the first selection the probability of blue is going to be two-sevenths and the probability of white 
will be 5 over 7. And for the second selection, the probability of blue again is still going to be 2 over 7. And the probability of white again is going to be 5 over 7 because the, the balls have been put back in. In this situation, we can draw a um, tree diagram. So this is our first selection and the probability of blue is going to be 2 over 7 and white will be 5 over 7. Then from the for the second selection, blue is 2 over 7 and white is 5 over 7. And here blue is again 2 over 7 and white 5 over 7. So the probability of a blue followed by a blue is going to be 2 over 7 multiplied by 2 over 7 which will be 4 over 49. The probability of a blue followed by a white will be 2 over 7 times 5 over 7 which is um, 10 over 49 and then the probability of a white followed by a blue will be 5 over 7 times 2 over 7 which is again 10 for over 49 and finally probability of white and white will be 2 not to 5 over 7 times 5 over 7 which is 25 over 49 <clears throat> when we're find when we're calculating when we're multiplying independent event events we go from left to oops to right in our multiplication of the branches and we can add mutually exclusive events <coughs> that are performed vertically. So say we, I want to keep this diagram up here. Say we want uh, the probability of different colours. So that would be the probability of a blue and a white or a white and a blue. So we would have the probability of blue and white is is this two times two over seven times five over seven, and that gave us the ten over forty nine plus white and blue. So white and blue is five sevenths times two sevenths, which was plus ten over 49 which gives us 20 over 49 and we could do we can do the same for the probability of the same color so um, if we wanted the probability of blue blue or white white um, it would be the four ninth, four forty ninths, plus twenty five over forty nine, and that would be um four out twenty five is twenty nine over forty nine. Sorry, so it's squished down the bottom there. Um, let's do an example to explore this a bit more fully. So we want to find the probability that the sum of the scores on three rows of an ordinary fair die is less than 
five. So we've we've rolled the ball the dice, sorry, three times. So if you roll it three times, the smallest sum is three. So the probability of the sum being less than five is going to be the probability oops. The probability of it being three plus the probability of it being four. So what is the probability of the sum equaling three? Now each roll each roll has six possible outcomes. Um, so that's 6 times 6 times 6 which is 216 possible outcomes. And each one has a possibility of, so the probability of some being equal to 3 is going to be 1 over 216 because there is one way of obtaining a sum of 3 and that's if we have a 1 followed by a 1 followed by a 1. Now for this probability of the sum equaling 4. So we've still got our 216 different ways of rolling our dice. Um, but there's now going to be three different outcomes because for the sum 4 we can have either a 1 plus a 1 plus a 2 or a 1 plus a 2 plus a 1 or a 2 plus a 1, plus a 1. So that's three possible outcomes. So the probability of the sum being less than 5 is going to be 1 over 216 plus 3 over 216 equals 1 over 54. Um, as to another one, ABBA passes through three independent traffic lights. As she's going to her work, the probability. that she has to stop at any particular light is 0 0.2. So we want to find, oops, the probability that Abha firstly has to stop at the second set of lights. Secondly has to stop at exactly one set of lights and C has to stop at any set of lights. So let's begin by saying we're going to um, 
let S mean stopping and X mean not stopping. So the probability of stopping is 0 0.2. So she's either going to be stopping or she's going to be not stopping. So the probability of not stopping must be 1 minus 0 0.2, which is 0 0.8. So the first has to stop at the second set of lights. So that would mean she didn't stop at the first, but then she did have to stop at the first. So we would, um, we're going to apply our multiplication law. So if she didn't stop at her first, that's 0 0.8 times 0 0.2, which would be 0 0.16. Now the probability of that she has to stop at exactly one set of lights. So now we need to think about the probability of, of, of um, What's the, what, what's the number of different different combinations of how this could work? So the probability of, of, of having to stop at one set of lights. So we could have, so we, need, we are going to be using um, our addition law. So we'd have the probability that she had to stop at the first, then she didn't need to stop at the next two. Or, the probability that she didn't stop at the first, then she stopped at the second, then she didn't stop at the third. Or, the probability that she didn't stop at the first, didn't stop at the second, but she did stop at the final set of lights. So, we've got the... We would have the... So the probability of the um, stopping is going to be here. I mean, um, probability of stopping was 0 0.2 times 0 0.8 times 0 0.8. Plus Not stopping is 0 0.8 times 0 0.2 times 0 0.8 plus 0 0.8 times 0 0.8 times 0 0.2. But let's look at this. 0 0.2 times 0 0.8 times 0 0.8 It's the same. We're doing the same sum in each case. So we've basically got 3 times 0 0.2 times 0 0.8 times 0 0.8 and once you work that out we get 0 0.384 and finally um, can I squeeze that in here we'll make it we'll, boom I'll make it squeeze it in down here so the third one is has to stop at any set of lights so the probability of has to stop So that's the opposite of not, she either has to stop or she doesn't. So if we think about the probability that she doesn't stop, and it's, it's going to be 1 minus that, so we 1 minus the probability of x, 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 which is 1 times 0.8 times 0.8 times 0.8, which is 0.8 cubed, is 0 0.488. So I hope that makes sense.